I'm Lauren Lando from ESS. I'm the director of sports performance. And today uh, I have a, a, a guest with us, uh, Francisco Lujan, who is the founder of Stat Performance. And uh, Stat Performance, if you don't know it, um, through the course of this interview, meeting, roundtable, uh, you're going to learn quite a bit about it and why it's so valuable for athletes of all ages and abilities. Um, so first and foremost, uh, Francisco, why don't you just give us a little bit of breakdown on, on how you got started with Stat Performance and how you founded it. So um, the way we st started with Stat Performance is we, uh, we found a huge gap in just uh, verified data. And it really started on an international level where uh, when I coached overseas, they, they really weren't able to identify athletes. Um, they were just bringing guys over, spending a lot of money on guys, but they, they, they would, had no way to really verify them. So the best way to say it is like a Craigslist ad, right? Tall, dark, and handsome. He shows up and he's big, fat, and hairy. You know what I mean? That, that type of thing. We kind of we, we kind of seen the same thing with, with athletes overall in, in uh, the same kind of way. He's a kid saying, hey, I run 4-3. He shows up and he runs 4-8, four, 4-9. Four, four, he's out of shape, all those types of things. So we needed to find new ways to kind of really identify that data. Mm -hmm. So we, we figured out just a new way of just bringing in technology, um, which we went directly to the NFL group called Zybex Sports and uh, talked to them about how we can involve them in our own combines. And at that point in time, we... we uh, uh, then evolved it into more of the domestic side of starting to do younger kids. Uh, so we went from professionals down to the younger guys, and and uh, you know at that point really just started seeing so much difference in in data from you know hand time to electronic timing and stuff like that. So we just we just felt like there was a major need in the market to to really just be able to to identify you know, where kids truly stood, you know what I mean? And that's our biggest thing is know where you really stand. You know what I mean? Know where you stand is, is our kind of our slogan. And then that's what we, you know, really preach as much as possible. Awesome. Well, and, and to your point, uh, I'd say one of my busiest times of year is the NFL Combine Prep. And I always tell people my job is to get athletes as fast as they say they are when they walk in the door. Correct. Every kid tells me they run a 4-4 if they're a skilled player. Every lineman tells me they run a 5-0. And I get the watch on them, and it's a 5-3, a 5-4, or a 4-6, 4-7. And so it's really hard to, to sit down to that kid and say, you don't run what you think you run. Mm -hmm. However, here's the things I need you to do to run consistently. The problem is they haven't had that standardized testing throughout high school and college because they're usually going off of a coach who's emotionally attached to them. Correct. They're going off of stopwatch times and the inaccuracies that you run into. I like the fact that you guys are putting out a model that, you know what, maybe the 4-3 the, the of today might be the 4-5 of tomorrow Correct. by standardizing data. However, if we finally have this level playing field, we can now truly look at talent identification for these athletes. Now, I have a question for you. In your opinion, what, what seems to be, if you were to pick the one test that, that typically is the gold standard of performance, what do you find? <laughs> well, it just depends on what you're measuring. Um, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, I think it, it varies for every sport. You know what I mean? And say, say we're looking at a speed power sport. Okay. Speed, you know what I mean? Speed, uh, but mainly power. You know what I mean? We're really looking for the power that the explosion the guy's doing. Um, I think I think a lot of people focus so much on the 40-yard dash and all that type of stuff, but they really don't focus on the power and the explosion that somebody actually has. Um, so, which is which they measure a lot of times at the NFL combines and, you know, such as the vertical jump, the broad jump, mm -hmm. or your power explosion type deal. And you can even measure your power within the first 10 yards exactly. is, is something that we really see um, to, to really know where an athlete is. Because in a 40, you're measuring endurance too as well. Mm -hmm. And a kid just may not be in shape that day. You know what I mean? He may not have done the right cardio things and that type of stuff. So as far as what we're really looking for, the power is the main thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we're trying to even add new new technology to our events to to even measure upper body power so we know a little bit more than a bench press and not yeah it's great but i don't think you get the the data that you want to get especially as a trainer as a coach to really identify that i think that's the most important thing is the data that you have and, and what do you do once you have that data and for example one, one thing that that i'll tend to do if i'm watching the nfl network and i'm watching the combine prep mm -hmm. and i see a defensive back a wide receiver a skills position of uh, of any sort um, i see their vertical jump and i see their broad jump no. Okay, I see great numbers on both, top of the charts, and then I see their 40. And I see a 40 time that's, that's pedestrian for that position. You know what that tells me as a coach? It tells me somebody didn't teach them how to run, how to finish. <laughs> and a lot of times, no. and, and tell me what you think, a lot of times I see a, um, a slower 40 because athletes are stopping before the end of the 40. They, they, are, they put on the, the subconscious brakes 
and they break technique, they do not run through the 40, and now they've shut it down. And the difference between one, two, and three tenths is not much. No, not at all. We, we see it every day. You know what I mean? Every time we test, and um, you know what I mean? It's, it's the number one factor, you know what I mean, that a lot of kids don't understand is a 40 doesn't stop at 40 yards. 40 stops at 60, 80, wherever you want to stop it, but it never stops at 40. And that's kind of been the, the key thing of, you know, what we've, what we've done to really standardize it to, to help out with those measurements is breaking down that data into increments like that. You know what, and if you don't mind, I know you brought yeah. um, some data with you. Can you pull that up and show us um, maybe just a, a, a glimpse of a report that you would get? Um, because as a coach, I've been doing this for a long time, and I, I, I have a pretty good sense of what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. um, if I see low power output, if I see high power output and slow speed, I know the things that I, I need to really work on to help that athlete really maximize their ability. But I think what you guys have done is, is unbelievable because you've, you've taken some of the hard work or, or maybe the guesswork out of it and you've put it out there, you've standardized it and you've put it out there for them in, in real easy, easy to understand format. And I don't know if you can turn that yeah, I'll turn uh, face the, the camera yeah. and we can get a... So just a basic, um, what we do for just a person that attends one of our combines, um, we'll kind of zoom in on that if I can get a good view of it. I could try to explain this upside down if I need to. Um, okay, so you kind of, is this a good shot of it? Okay, so basically what we do with our profiles now, excuse me, the, basically what we do with our profiles now on just a standardized kid that walks into and does one of our combines that we're a part of, they'll receive a basic profile. What this basic profile will identify is where they rank on a uh, combine level and in each one of the drills that they just did. At the end of that, we also give them a point system, which is based out of 100 points. So their max they can get per drill is 33.3. We have it break, broken down into three different sections. And the way that we break it down is in speed, power, and agility. And then we give them a total at that point. Then at, on the other side of that, we actually break it down into a percentage, percentage breakdown. And the way the percentage breakdown is, is to really identify, just like you do with an a ECT or SAT score, of like, here's your ACT score, but here's where you, your composition you know, as you are as, as far as a, a group, okay, mm -hmm. as percentage-wise is what I'm trying to say. And, and that's the basic standardized thing that every athlete will receive from there. The next step that we go on to, and this is kind of uh, what we, this is where we really want every kid to be, uh, but we just know with the time and effort it takes us to put all these together, can't give them away for free, but we try to give them to them as a, a way to add on to them. So this is what we could call is their extended profiles. And you can see that everything's broken down at a, as a, as a uh, event ranking and so on and so forth. And then we'll just go to this picture right here, okay? So what we do throughout this entire thing is we kind of break it down. We actually have a camera that now takes pictures of them. So with the 40-yard dash system, it will take a picture of, of, of them in their first 0.4 seconds, okay? Mm -hmm. So right when they're getting off the line and then 0.4 seconds after that. So you, the kid can actually see his explosion as he's coming off the line and all that type of stuff. Is he getting stuff. horizontal? Is he Correct, yeah. vertically? And that's exactly what we're, we show is, is his body angle as we do, um, as we go to the next set, which you're referring to, Lauren, is where we show body angle. Mm -hmm. So then the kid actually can see within his thing of where his body angle is and all that type of stuff. Then the next step as we do, we, we kind of process in this whole thing, and I apologize for having to move this so much, but we'll just get it to oh, a good thing, um, is now where he's at is in his performance levels, okay? And that's exactly what we referred to as what we we're talking about with the 40-yard dash as a kid start um, ending before, you know, before he gets to the, to the finish line and all that type of stuff. So we, we give him where they are at the very beginning. So he's, this kid ranks in the 90th percentile. Um, for his first 10, then his next, his next 10, he's in the 80th percentile. Then his last 20, um, he's in the 20, he's in the 75th percentile. So right away, you're able to identify, okay, well, he's great at this start, so he's got good power, he's got a good explosion, but he's not finishing his 40 the way that he needs to finish it. So as a trainer, technique, speed, endurance, it could be so many variables. But now it gives you somewhere to actually go from. Correct. Now you have somewhere to go from. Correct. And then what we do since we, you know, we, since we work with directly with the NFL uh, combine group on this is we're actually able to do velocity ratings as far as how your athlete's velocity is on, on a true data point scale. So then people understand exactly, all right, here's, here's my velocity by itself. Well, let's see what it is compared to a professional athlete. So when we take the average of it so then everybody can actually see, all right, this is how far I am. So I may not be NFL quality, 
and this is my proof. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you, what do you do with this data? Does the data go to the athlete? Do you send it out to... to so, so the data, so the way that we are is we're a third party te uh, testing organization. So what we do is we send this to the athletes all get their reports. And then, then also the organization gets the reports. Mm -hmm. Most organizations that, that contract us out are ones that work directly with colleges, so they okay. can send that out to whoever they want to. Um, our biggest thing is what we're trying to do and with, with a bunch of research and development is to have college co coaches understand this. So when they see the score or they see the, this information, they know right away. Because um, we know that if you're, you know, hey, you're recruiting coordinator at Alabama, you have 9 million kids that are coming across your desk. Well, how can I identify and maybe find the diamond in the rough mm -hmm. just from a score or whatever? Because it like, you know, hey, if you're trying to get admissions into Harvard, everybody's got a 4.9 and all this other stuff that they right. have as extracurricular activities. How do you do the same thing with athletes? And mm -hmm. that's really a lot of times it comes down to ACT, SAT scores as, as a way to kind of measure it. And with you know the reports and things that we're giving them, it also gives strength and conditioning coaches saying, okay, this is a six five athlete that mm -hmm. can move, and he's got this. All we really got to do is change some technique. He's got upside. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what we're trying to identify. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what you're saying. So let me, let me ask you this. So um, watching the NFL Combine, so it, I, I've sent guys to the Combine for shoot last fifteen years. Okay, and you know as a coach, you know we all have our little strategies, techniques to be better at this test and that test. Well, the NFL got really good about four or five years ago at cracking down on how the vertical jump was being measured. Mm -hmm. And what you happened to see that specific year was a very stringent, a stringent and more standardized way at which they took the original reach height. Mm -hmm. However, the problem was is that those numbers now were no longer relevant to the numbers of years before. So I think what had happened is you saw linebackers jumping with 30-inch verticals. Mm -hmm. You saw the highest vertical jump that year at the combine was a 38, and normally you have 42s, 43s. Well, it changed the way those numbers were perceived. The next year, they weren't as strict on that because the 30-inch <laughs> vertical jump or the 28-inch vertical jump for a running back, boy, that's not good. Correct. You know, when we looked at the data that we had for the last 20 years, and so now you change the way you do a reach height. So I guess my point is, how important is it to have the same person testing you time and time again to have a following of standardized procedures? Uh, very important, because um, the thing about it is every time you test, there's always going to be some vari variable, especially mm -hmm. if you have different people testing. Um, and that's why we try to always, you know, we always try to present that we want our staff there, our staff, our staff, because our staff knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but not everybody can afford that all the time, which we understand. But at least they're taking the measures to do it correctly, um, which, you know, refers to the biggest thing at the NFL combine, right? Nothing changes. Mm -hmm. they're, they're very much usually the same people every single time. Even the security guards at the on the field don't change. <laughs> right, right. It's the same guy every single year when you walk down the stairs. Um, you know what I mean? And, and that's, that's why I say is the, the problem that the NFL always had, and it's the same thing that they do right now, is what's, what's being introduced and in, in which, which is uh, the system we use is a hand start with, with an electronic, or sorry, electronic finish with electronic, uh, electronic start with electronic finish. And then uh, and the NFL has never done it that way. They've always been hand start right. with electronic finish, mm -hmm. which, which plays effect. You know what I mean? And it's exactly what you said is how, how do we go back to all that data before to say Chris Johnson wasn't the fastest guy ever at the NFL Combine? We can't, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, if we do switch it. So exactly what you're saying is that's why it kind of switched up with, with the vertical is, all right, hey, we, we, want the, we want these numbers to make them compete with the years past so we can really keep the true data line. So, you know, like I said, it, that's, that's a tough place to change it, but at right. some point it should, you know. That's my, that's my thought. Absolutely. Well, and that's the unique thing that, that you are doing with your company is you are bringing out that team of coaches of yours who are implementing it and doing it the same way. So if, if my son or daughter come to one of your, your combines and they test in one year, the next year, they'll probably see the same faces and they're going to do the same tests. They're going to do the same tests each and every time. Correct. And I've sent athletes to combines before where, you know, the way I prepared an athlete, you know, this hand down, this hand touch wasn't the same. Correct. And to me, I feel I've done a disservice because on the back end, they weren't uh, systematic in their approach to how they were actually gathering these numbers. 100%. And at the end of the day, I don't even know what they were doing with those numbers. So the service that you're providing uh, is, is exactly what's needed out there. So one, the parents, tr parents' money for training isn't going to waste, but also when college coaches and scouts uh, look at these numbers, they know these numbers are relevant. Correct. And they know they mean something. So to me, it's a win-win for the athletes, no doubt. 
Well, I, I, I thank you so much. And, and is there a website that, that they can find? Yeah, so uh, our website is www.stat-performance.com. Stat-performance. Yeah, um, and so you'll find all the – we don't put data out there because, like I said, that's confidential stuff for everybody. But, um, through, you know, you can – if you do your own combine, you can get your own date. <laughs> awesome. And you can awesome. get all the compare points. And then you have a calendar of dates throughout the year that you will run combines around the country. Correct. So for us, we're pretty much uh, from now until uh, middle of middle of May, we're booked uh, as far as going each and everything. Uh, the big one that's coming up and which will be, you know, publicly announced to everybody will be the Under Armour Combines, which will be presented by Rivals.com. Um, that will be for, for pretty much any kid that's uh, ninth grade to 12th grade and starting to get that information. And they are free combines and all that type of stuff too as well. Quick question. Parent, parent comes into me and says, how old should I start testing my athlete? What, what do you say? I, I say it's test them as young as you can. Um, you know what I mean? One, one reason is, is what we preach to parents is, it saves yourself some money. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If if your kid's just not an athlete, then, you know what I mean, pick up something else that, that, that they may feel a little bit better in. You know what I mean? Not saying that, that – just don't bank off a college scholarship. You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. more of just saying, hey, go ahead and play, enjoy it, but don't spend the, the other thousands and thousands of dollars to do that type of stuff if you don't have to. But uh, we like to get them in, you know what I mean, fifth, fifth sixth, sixth grade, you know what I mean? It's because yeah. the recruiting process is starting then, yep. you know what I mean? And, and we need to get that data to start allowing them to be able to improve as they get to ninth grade and they're starting to have college coaches, you know, showing up and watching them play. Yeah, and, and I agree with you too uh, on that point because, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, parents will come to me and say, uh, you know, or should I test my kids or what do these numbers even mean? And the one, one thing I say is they really don't mean much now. Correct. I said, however, we can chart progress over time. And the other thing I tell the parents is that your sport will find your athlete yeah. or find your child. And what, what I mean by that is how many kids do you see that, you know, they run cross country or, or they, they do like one sport is endurance and the other sport is speed power. And they don't understand that the training's conflicting with yeah. their abilities. <laughs> and so I have somebody who swims and then plays football. Well, that's like apples and rocks. Yeah, exactly. And so what I try to say is, you know, you're, you're going to show you where your fiber type um, priority is. We'll show you in time and, and you will ultimately find your sport based on the success you're having. Because I think a lot of times, you know, we just throw kids into sports, which is fine, but we don't understand that they may be actually counterproductive in their training. 100%. 100%. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> well, Francisco Lujan, thank you so much for coming out and, uh, thank you for and sharing me. the data. I appreciate it. Appreciate thank it. You, thank you, buddy. Appreciate it.